This demonstration will provide a brief overview of the basic modeling and navigation tools in Discovery Live. These tools will be covered in greater detail in a later video. Selecting new from the start page creates a new empty model. We begin with a sketch grid in the home view. This viewing angle is also called the isometric view. Clicking the design tab in the ribbon along the top of the window expands the toolbar. For this brief demonstration, we're going to focus on the tools in the orient, sketch, and edit sections. Double clicking the design tab will disable the auto hide behavior of the toolbar. To turn auto hide back on, simply double click the tab again. To orient the sketch plane so it's aligned with the screen, we can click the plan view button in the floating toolbar at the bottom of the window. If we take a moment to hover over the button with the mouse, a tooltip will appear. Note the letter V in parentheses. Many tools in Discovery Live have shortcut keys mapped to letters on the keyboard. These shortcut keys are a quick way to move between tools in the user interface. The help files can be accessed at any time by pressing F1. If you press F1 while a tooltip is displayed, you will be taken directly to that topic within the help documentation. This can be very useful when exploring the numerous tools and options within Discovery Live. Now let's click Plan View to reorient the sketch grid. In the Sketch section of the toolbar, we'll click Rectangle. Note that this tool also has a shortcut key, the letter R. Let's sketch a rectangle on the grid. We click to place the first point, then move the mouse cursor and click again to complete the placement. For this example, we're not too concerned with the exact dimensions. Now that the rectangle is finished, click the Select button. This takes us out of the Rectangle Sketching tool. Let's click the 3D Mode button to exit the sketch. These three buttons can help us navigate between the various modes in SpaceClaim, but several of the tools will automatically activate these modes as well. For instance, the Pull tool, which we'll use in a moment, would have taken us back to 3D mode from the sketch as soon as we clicked it. Before activating the Pull tool, let's rotate the model a bit and review some of the commands in the Orient section of the toolbar. We can spin the model by clicking the middle mouse button and dragging in any direction. To pan, Press and hold the Shift key, then middle click and drag. By default, zooming is done by holding Control, then using middle click and drag up or down. If you prefer to roll the middle mouse wheel to zoom, you can set this in the navigation section of the Discovery Live options. At the bottom left of the window is the orientation tool. By clicking an axis, we can quickly orient the view so we're looking at the model from that direction. By clicking and dragging the dashed ring around the tool, we can rotate the model in the current view plane. The pull command can be used to create or modify geometry in a variety of ways. The principal workflow is to select a face, then click and drag to add or remove geometry. We can also type in an exact value with the keyboard. The pull tool is able to make changes to any face or multiple faces on the model simultaneously. There are also options here for adding draft, scaling, revolving about a center axis, and sweeping along a curve. Another useful tool is move. This command allows us to change the position or orientation of a selected object. Now that we've activated the move tool, let's select the solid body from the structure tree. The structure tree can be found by hovering over this icon at the right of the screen. We can select the solid body from the list here, but we can also click and drag a box in the window to select it, or click quickly three times on the body. The Move tool has six directions we can choose from, three for moving in a straight line, and three for rotating around each of the axes. Like the Pull tool, we can click and drag, or select a direction and press the space bar to enter a value. The Move tool can also be repositioned on the solid body. And this gives us a great deal of precision and flexibility for adjusting the location of the entire model or making changes to individual aspects of the design. The last two tools we'll take a look at are Undo and Redo. If we've made a change to the model that we don't wish to keep, we can click the Undo button at the top of the screen. Notice that the Undo command also has a shortcut key, Control Z. Let's make one more change to this model to wrap up the demonstration and review what we've learned. Our goal is to create a hole that passes through the model at an angle. To begin, we'll activate the Circle Sketch tool. 
We then select the top face to locate the sketch plane. We can click Plan View or press V to reorient the view and click in the grid to place the center of the circle. Once we've decided on the diameter, we click again to complete the sketch. Activating the pull command automatically transitions to 3D mode and we'll rotate the model using the middle mouse click and drag to get a better view. Clicking the circular profile and dragging in the direction opposite to the yellow arrow removes the material and we'll make sure to pull all the way through the solid body. If needed, we can adjust the diameter of the hole by clicking and dragging with the pull tool still active. Once we're satisfied, we can start the move tool. Assuming we place the center of the sketch where the hole needs to be, we should make sure to adjust the angle by rotating about this point. We can change the position of the move tool by clicking and dragging the center point to the desired location. Then use one of the rotation handles to move the hole. This concludes the demonstration on the basic modeling and navigation tools in Discovery Live.